The world is divided into four spheres, each sphere divided among continents and nations. Nations are divided by borders and interests. These interests divide the news. We examine the impact of these divisions on people and power. This is Imaginary Lines. Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Michael Fox. If you've been following news on Latin America, you've heard about the current border closure between Venezuela and Colombia in Táchira State, and about the current tensions between Venezuela and Colombia. The mainstream media has covered it, denouncing the deportation of Colombians from Venezuela, but the spin is skewed. I'll speak with the Venezuela-based independent journalist Zoe Dudka about the crime, smuggling, and paramilitarism that's led up to this current moment, and also about the realities on the ground. But first, let's take a look at the latest Human Rights Watch attack on Ecuador. Here it is. On August 27th, Human Rights Watch America's managing director, Daniel Wilkinson, penned an article about the alleged persecution of environmentalists in Ecuador, marking yet another biased and misleading article from the controversial NGO. The author attacks the government of Rafael Correa for opening up 1% of the Yasuni National Park and the Amazon for oil exploration, failing to mention that under Correa, Ecuador has invested oil revenue into important public infrastructure, such as hospitals, schools, and highways, with much going directly back into communities in the Amazon. Wilkinson also claims Executive Decree 16 was implemented ahead of the decision to open oil exploration in the Yasuni in order to strengthen the government's ability to persecute environmental activists when it was actually based on a law from 2009. The decree specifies that NGOs be required to reveal their sources of funding and that they keep their organizational mandates. Presenta un informe que tenemos como estrategia de represión brutal. Somos unos locos, masoquistas que torturamos a la gente. Si aquí no es Guantánamo, que eso está prohibido, compañeros. Many NGOs in Latin America have a dubious reputation with cables published by WikiLeaks providing that the United States often funds NGOs as a means of deliberately interfering in the internal affairs of sovereign countries, even supporting organizations aimed at regime change. Ultimately, the timing of Wilkinson's article should be cause for concern. Many private media outlets and NGOs such as Human Rights Watch have recently published biased attacks on the Korea government. These come on the heels of a recent rash of opposition protests which have looked to undermine and destabilize a democratically elected government that still enjoys widespread support. On August 21st, Venezuela announced the closure of the border with Colombia after an attack by suspected paramilitaries left three Venezuelan soldiers critically wounded. These death squads, which are accused of mass human rights violations in their native Colombia, are said to be responsible for numerous criminal activities in Venezuela, including drug trafficking, kidnappings, and politically motivated assassinations. Within the first days after the border closing, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro declared a 60-day state of exception for part of the border region to deal with the crisis. Venezuela moved to clean up the crime, smuggling, and paramilitaries. It's hard to underestimate the effect of these issues on Venezuela and its economy. According to some reports, 40% of Venezuelan goods are smuggled out of the country. Meanwhile, amid Venezuela's operation on the border, just over a thousand Colombians were deported, causing an uproar in Colombia and the international press, despite the fact that Venezuela has openly received millions of migrants and refugees throughout Colombia's half-century-long internal conflict. Some context and analysis here is important. Zoe Dudka is a journalist with VenezuelaAnalysis.com. She's lived in Santa Elena de Guaren on the Venezuelan border with Brazil for seven years. Zoe, thank you so much for joining me on Imaginary Lines. Yeah, thank you, Mike, for having me. Zoe, for those that don't have the context, paint a picture for me of the reality on the Venezuelan border that's led up to this current border closure and this current moment of political crisis with Colombia. Well, on all Venezuelan borders right now, and this includes the border I'm on with Brazil, as well as the, um, the land border with Guyana, and of course, Colombia, we have just kind of, it's, it's um, a flight, not a capital flight, the flight of food, of medicine, of construction materials. It's just smuggling and contraband on a mass scale. Uh, also gasoline. I think the official estimate um, is that 40% of 
Venezuelan food items and 45,000 barrels of oil are getting um, illegally sold outside the country's borders every day. So th that's, you know, that's, that's pretty massive and that's, it's, you definitely pick up on it living on a border here. Now, um, things are definitely much calmer down here than they are in, uh, on the border with Colombia. And why that is, in, I don't only mean to refer to um, what's going on now, but just in general, there, there's always been a paramilitary, not always, but there's a definite, definite paramilitary presence on the Colombian border and a lot more violence. It's not only smuggling, you have a lot of different illicit activities that are now coming into light. Since uh, 2,000, possibly 3,000 soldiers were deployed to that region, and the border was closed in the state of Tatria. Um, they've uncovered uh, underground networks, evidence of human trafficking, of the sexual exploitation of minors, and just um, criminal uh, rings that you know very much um, are controlled by Colombian paramilitaries and um, uh, and people on the Venezuelan side as well. And what's led up to this? It obviously, didn't just start overnight, right? No, absolutely not. Um, we, you know, this has been going on for for quite a while. I mean, to get to the to the point that it's at now, it, it took a number of years, and I don't think that it. I don't. I don't think that it um, should have been a surprise for many people who are engaged there that the government would act because it was getting to a point that was. Um, it was. It was impossible to ignore, and I, I think uh, a question that many Venezuelans have is, why. Why has this not happened sooner? We are all aware, especially people in that Western region, um, that so much of the food that should be on Venezuelan shelves are getting transported into Colombia. I mean, I think Cucuta, which is the closest um, city on the other side, on the Colombian border, I think an estimate um, is that 70% of products on their shelves are Venezuelan. And why is it occurring? Like, what's, what's actually happening here? What's behind this? Right. Okay. Thank you. So I, I guess um, there are two things, and one of them is the subsidy, at least Venezuelan, um, the Venezuelan government has a very steep subsidy on, on gasoline. It's the cheapest in the world. It's cheaper than water. Filling a tank here is cheaper than a hard candy. You know, it's impossibly inexpensive. And obviously, you know, in Brazil, it's twice the price than it is in the United States. In Colombia, I'm not aware exactly what the price is there right now, but I'm quite sure it's a whole lot more than here. So it's, it's, it's um, a very uh, profitable business. And the same goes for food items. A lot of those food items have been subsidized through different like uh, socialist missions for um, nutrition, for accessible nutrition. A lot of them um, are just simply cheaper because there's also an imbalance um, with the black market currency rates. Um, you know, here on the Brazilian border, one Brazilian real is worth 160 uh, Venezuelan Bolivars on the black market. So it just it just makes for a very um, profitable cycle of smuggling. There's been widespread condemnation of the deportation of Colombians from Venezuela and in fact the Colombian TV station RCN even ran a report uh, saying that Colombians were being persecuted in Venezuela like in biblical times. What's your analysis of the media coverage and what's the reality for Colombian refugees in Venezuela at this moment? Well, the situation for Colombian refugees is different. Um, Venezuela has, uh, let's see, I think 173,000 uh, Colombian refugees currently in the country. Venezuela takes in more refugees than any other country in Latin America and gives them free health care, education, social services, and even housing, which is something we do not see in um, mass media. So um, the United Nations has confirmed this week that not a single one of those um, Colombians with refugee status was deported, despite an accusation made by the U.S. State Department last week. Um, now, the question of, you know, there, there have been deportations in general. Um, when the state of exception was called in, on August 19th, um, 2,000 soldiers were deployed to an area in Tachira called La Invasión. Um, and at, while I, I don't think it's fair to say that all of them were smugglers, um, La Invasión was um, is a makeshift border town um, that largely inhabited by undocumented Colombians. That was the hub of all kinds of illegal activity, smuggling. Um, there was also drug trafficking. There's been evidence of human trafficking and sexual exploitation of minors, as well as um, paramilitary circles in La Invasión. So it's 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 a city 
um, that draws a lot of attention to itself. And um, I don't think that these that the the deportations were were made based on the Colombians' legal status or immigration status. I actually think that was um, that was the least of it. The, the issue is is kind of dismantling this um, this hub of illegal activity. But it is interesting how this is being picked up in the news, right? There was even a statement from the EU denouncing Venezuela's deportation of Colombians. So I think it's safe to say that any government around the world would have reacted similarly and perhaps even quite a long time ago to the situation that we have on the border and with La Invasión um, near Colombia. And I just, I think um, it's, it's very hypocritical for the United States government and the European Union to feign um, horror at this scenario when it's, it's on, I mean, it, it's hardly a drop in the sea of misinformation that kind of surrounds Venezuela. But it is a significant issue when we're talking about hypocrisy. In, in all honesty, the fact that the United States can criticize deportations anywhere, it's, it's um, kind of hard to believe. But I, I, I think it's significant that President, uh, uh, Vice President Arreaza has said there will be no more deportations except for case by case. And that's where we stand now. Zoe, thank you so much for joining me in Imaginary Lines. Best of luck with all of your work on VenezuelaAnalysis.com. All right, thank you so much for having me. And now here are a few stories of Colombians living in Venezuela. Es reconocido y conocido por todo que en la frontera se vive el efecto del narcotráfico, del paramilitarismo, el bachaqueo de productos básicos, del contrabando, de extracción, gasolina que va a Colombia. Soy eh, altamente identificada con la decisión del, del comandante Maduro y también consideramos en, con todo nuestro apoyo. Eh, yo, yo soy refugiado político en Venezuela. Desde la presidencia de Hugo Chávez se vienen desarrollando acciones de inclusión con todo extranjero, no solo el colombiano, todo extranjero que ha llegado y que vive, como en el caso nuestro, que vivimos acá y nos beneficiamos de todas las misiones sociales. Donde se le garantizan todos los derechos, alimentación, educación, salud, diversión, todo lo que no se le garantiza en Colombia, en mi tierra. La salud grat gratuita no la tenemos en Colombia, la educación eh, gratuita tampoco, eh, el acceso a la alimentación eh, subsidiada tampoco existe en Colombia. He gozado de una vivienda digna, he estudiado, tengo dos títulos en la misión Sucre. Oye, vas a un médico y no tienes que pagar nada, ¿qué más le puedo pedir yo a Venezuela? That's it for today's program, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Michael Fox. Please join me next week.